Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Library presents Inside the Clock Tower. Good morning and welcome to Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Libraries About the Town program this morning. My name is Karen and I am the Adult Program Specialist here at Alexander Hamilton and we are happy to bring um, this series to you. Today's video will join others in our collection as we travel about the town of Waynesboro, visiting with local businesses and shops, nonprofits, to learn about what they have to offer and their specialties. If you have recalled, we have shared already the science of the root beer float featuring Warner's Soda Shop, weaving with Pat Beard at 42 West Arts, hand dipping chocolates at the candy kitchen, the significance of the cigar store Indian with Christie's house of pipes and cigars, a tour of the renovated movie theater with Main Street Waynesboro Incorporated, making a Sapporo fever roll with Sapporo Japanese restaurant, from camera to gallery wall with professional photographer Rodney Clark at Clark Photography and Gallery 35 East, Printing the Laser Way at Sanders Creations Laser Graphics. The Art of the Flower Arrangement at Eichholz Flowers. We hope through this series you, our viewers, will gain a greater knowledge of the Borough of Waynesboro, Pennsylvania through the sharing of its history and demonstrations by local proprietors and artisans. So let's get started with today's program, In the Clock Tower. Come along now as we go to the Clock Tower. Welcome to our program today, where we will be taking a look at a very familiar location in downtown Waynesboro. First, some history. The plea for a new town hall began in early 1880 because the old one was inadequate for lectures, fairs, and entertainment. In July of that year, Borough Council, with a combined effort on the part of Paul Advocates and the two fire companies, a majority on council voted in favor of the new building. It would be 38 feet wide, 95 feet deep, and two stories high. This first floor of the building was home to both of Waynesboro's fire departments, the Mechanics Steam Fire Engine and Hose Company, located on one side of the building, and Always There Hook and Ladder Company, located on the other side. The second floor featured a large auditorium, council meeting room, and town offices. Musical and dramatic performances, high school graduations, and little theater productions were held in the auditorium. The clock on the building was originally installed in 1850 in the first town hall. This building later became known as the Collins Building. The bell was moved from its location to its present location in 1880. The time mechanism was originally powered by heavy weights on a cable. The borough hired a policeman to wind and watch the clock. In 1960, the clock's mechanism was electrified. The clock's bell was forged in Philadelphia and is the original. And here is something to think about when listening to the clock's bell toll. This same bell would have tolled for the Civil War troops marching through town. Today, the building houses the Waynesboro Police Department, the Mayor's Office, and Borough Council Chambers. Now that we know a little bit of history of the building, let's take a look at today's program, Inside the Clock Tower. Access to the tower is gained through a small doorway and stairs located on the second floor. We climb the steps to the balcony level of the building. Let's take a look around. As you can see, we find a view out of one window facing Main Street. This center window is actually the top half of the large window that you can see from the front of the building. Additionally, on this level is a portion of a wall that remains and has preserved the names of some of the people that have come through this level over the years.
We have moved from the balcony level of the building into the clock tower. There is not much on this level, just an empty space with a window facing Main Street. And off to the left and right, there are windows, but for safety reasons, they are not accessible for this look around. These windows appear to be purely decorative as there are no rooms behind them, just the small space that you can see in the pictures. We have moved on up to the level of the tower that houses the bell, and you can see how we got here. All four sides have louvered openings with netting on to keep animals and birds out, but the main attraction on this level is the bell, so let's take a look around. We are going up yet another ladder into the top of the tower where the clock mechanism is housed. This area seems much smaller as the clock mechanism takes up a great deal of space. There are small doors on all four sides of the tower which appear to be used to change the lights that shine on the clock. These openings also give you a great look of Waynesboro. And of course, the clock mechanism with the gears and wheels is a piece of art in itself. Thank you for joining us for today's About the Town program, Inside the Clock Tower. We hope you have enjoyed looking around as much as we did. A special thanks goes out to the Borough of Waynesboro and the Waynesboro Police Department for helping make this program possible. If you have historical information or pictures of the clock tower, why not share in the comments section of this post? or email them to the library at adultprograms at ahmfl.org. Thank you again for joining us today.